Hello, this is Squeeze in English, and this is a second conversation. This time is not about health, but it's more about a topic that we actually deal with every day, and it's English and learning and studying English. And today I have a, a great guest, a great friend, uh, Kuba, who is an English teacher right now uh, in Olomouc and, and Rostov as well. So yeah, uh, without further ado, who is Kuba Hanak? Introduce yourself, please. <laughs> well, so uh, I am a teacher of English. I've been teaching English for about eight years. Um, I started lecturing just basically tutoring friends uh, who struggled uh, with English. They had trouble understanding the tenses and so on. Uh, then I actually realized that it would be a good idea to, to, uh, do this as a, as a, you know, as a job. So, uh, I, f I, I started doing it like professionally when I moved to Turkey in 2013, I found a job as a, as a teacher. I, uh, taught English in a kindergarten and uh, a language school was called American Culture or something like that in Istanbul and this was I actually realized it was a uh, it was it was so good that I wanted to do this for the rest of my life so now I teach at two schools uh, I teach in Olomouc Lingua Center and uh, Big Ben Brostyov which is a uh, mainly focused on kids and uh, of course we've got CAE classes for uh, teenagers and adults as well but mainly focusing on uh, on kids and of course I've got my private lessons so if anybody comes to me any, anybody struggles with English pronunciation grammar and so on so they come to me for conversation lessons and I usually correct their grammar and uh, pronunciation. So you mentioned Istanbul, Turkey. That's not very common destination <laughs> to to teach or to 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 live. Um, so was there anything before that? Where did you get the the experience, or where did you learn English before? Well, actually, uh, it was very disappointing for me after I finished uh, high school. Uh, I didn't. I was not accepted at university uh, here at the pedagogical faculty of uh, Masaryk University, and uh, well, I decided to study at uh, at a language school in. Uh, it's called Park. Uh, and it was uh, probably the best language school in Brno, so I chose that. Great experience. I spent a year of intensive courses in there. Uh, great people, great teachers, and this motivated me even even more. And after the second disappointment came, after I failed the exam again, I didn't want to stay here, so I decided to go to England. I said, okay... I'm just struggling, wasting time in here. Let's move on. And uh, I, I, I bought a flight ticket or an uh, air ticket to England. And uh, I just went there and found the job and worked there for about nine months. Uh, and this was my real experience. So you'd, you'd already had the passion for language. Absolutely. And you'd been studying before. I mean... You know, in the in the typical way, elementary school, high school, which is not very good for a conversation, <laughs> not very uh, sufficient. Um, but yeah, the important thing is uh, you had your goal to to improve that. Yeah, mm -hmm. you didn't go there to make money as many people do mm -hmm. from the Czech Republic. Yeah, uh, you really wanted to to improve that. that yes, the, the language skills. So so so, how was that? Uh, was it London, right? Yeah, it was. And, and so, what did you do there? Like, uh, what, what what did you do there? Did you have any uh, any 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 job soon, or did you experience any crisis, any any disappointments <laughs> as well there? Uh, absolutely, I did. I moved to London, and uh, it was the first time I was just you know alone, standing on my feet. 
And uh, did did you have any any saved money, or uh, did you just like scrape by, <laughs> like uh, one pound a day or something I had, like that? Okay, I I was quite ready. I had about seven hundred and twenty quid in my pocket, and w- which is like if we um, how much would it be? In oh, back then rounds? it was. I think it was 20? over over forty forty thousand ah, crowns. 40, 40, it was back then. Uh, the uh, English pound was or the British pound was around thirty crowns. Mm. I think twenty nine thirty mm. crowns. Mm. So I can't really remember the exact amount, but I had just enough money to pay for a month. Uh, and I realized that half of what I had paid was just a deposit. So after two weeks, they actually wanted more money, which I didn't realize. So uh, I nearly ended up in the street. So I had to borrow money. I I actually had found the job, and uh, the the great disadvantage of having uh, a job or working at the hotel where I worked uh, was that we were paid monthly, which is quite unusual in in uh, Anglo-Saxon countries because yeah, you usually I can get wages. Right? Uh, when I was in uh, New Zealand, it was uh, actually weekly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, extreme. so you get wages, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we were paid monthly. So I remember my first check. Uh, it was about uh, one thousand one hundred thirty-seven pounds. Mm-hmm. I got a beautiful check, uh, but before I had to uh, borrow some money so that I wouldn't end up in the street. So I did. So I actually had great roommates, and they <laughs> lent me some money. Uh so I survived and after I got my check uh I I paid them back and I started living and actually mm-hmm. you know eating proper food not okay. the scrap pizza from Iceland maybe go to bars to really start talking to someone maybe <laughs> Oh uh, yeah I actually I went to bar when I was uh broke mm-hmm. uh so I talked to this Irish guy of uh, and I don't know I I think I I had no money, but I still pay uh, paid a pint, uh, and just just to talk to him. And mm. I think I, mm. I, I I bought him some beer or something. Yeah. And like we're just talking. But it was definitely <laughs> worth it. Yeah, you had like the real uh, experience talking to someone <laughs> talking yeah, to, to to get the accent, you know, to oh, yeah. to learn the experience, the real. It real was stuff. it was real, but the thing is that. Many people think that okay, I'm going to London. I learn, or I'm going to England. I learn English, right? Or they go there to learn the language, but they most of the time these people they end up living with Czech roommates. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and they just uh, they can't break the bonds of the you know of the of the Czech mm-hmm. community. Mm-hmm. You know, and I wasn't mm-hmm. really like that. But even in the hotel, uh, most of the people were foreigners, and mm-hmm. they're English. Was horrible. Oh yeah. When yeah. I, when I came there, my English was actually, I think, better. Yeah. Than you know most of the people. So, mm. uh, most most of the people were from Poland, Nepal, India, and so on. Many different accents. So it it, it took so much time, and Af- people from Africa, specific mm-hmm. accents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it it took so much time to to get used to it and to to realize what the people are actually saying. Especially, you know, uh, I, I worked as a house porter, which means basically supplying stuff like mm-hmm. duvets, blankets, pillows, uh, soap, and these things to to hotel rooms and so on. Uh, so I worked for housekeeping. So I guess there wasn't even like like a, such a big space for conversations. Yeah, did you work more like a isolated? Oh yeah, I was yeah, on your own. I was I was I was working on my own, but the the thing was that I had a pager, yeah, technology about 40 years old. No. Uh but uh they always called me. I had to answer as soon as possible and they called me and they said, "Okay, bring me two single duvets." So I had to go to the cupboard and uh bring two single duvets, bring it to the room and while I got a uh, while I was doing this, I got three four five calls sometimes when we were busy uh from the reception concierge other people working mm-hmm. in different rooms wanting stuff from me so i was basically just running them back uh delivering stuff 
so I had to deal with the reception, concierge, mm-hmm. the guest occasionally, and usually the 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 roommate. Mm-hmm. That was that was uh, the main thing I was doing there, the job. But so how did it uh, improve your English? Because you mentioned like uh, especially in London, uh, it's very likely that um, you would deal with other mm-hmm. uh, immigrants uh, whose uh, English is even poorer. Yeah. Yeah. So and and you can of course listen to uh, radio, watch TV, but you can do it here as well. This is a passive yeah. uh, studying. Absolutely. So so. Um, It seems to me, like uh, after what you are saying, that it wasn't really satisfying. No, absolutely In terms not. of like, uh, maybe you got some money, you know, and yeah, so yeah, on. Yeah. But in terms of um, some kind of improving and and uh, and uh, enough space for actually practicing speaking with uh-huh. local people, Londoners or English. Yeah, it was know. it was very poor uh, in terms of learning the language or experiencing the language of course you did experience it you had to i don't know uh ask for the way and so on sometimes uh but did, did you take advantage of for example asking people for this how to get somewhere just you know just because you wanted to to improve that oh yeah or or, or chat with someone at the supermarket just uh, to just to take advantage of talking to of the, of the real life locals. I, I, def- I definitely yeah. did um well sometimes uh there was no choice because uh once there was i don't know they uh they were uh fixing up the underground the uh victoria line and i had to take a bus instead uh and it was funny because i didn't know how to get there what bus to take and so on so it was about five in the morning it was dark outside and i had to talk to this uh lady who's you know in this cabin uh behind that plastic glass and talking into the microphone and you know the funny thing is that i don't understand people mm. in let's say check post office when they talk through right. the mic mic right. right and you know this was like very strong sort of like london based ox- accent mixture of all the different accents and I was like, I was focusing and I was like okay okay uh-huh uh-huh can you write it for me and then uh, I I actually so that I didn't feel like an or so that I didn't look like a complete idiot I said okay I I, I grasped uh, the main uh information grasp it means like uh you got the the key the, yeah words, the, the, the key words the, the key the, message right yeah yeah mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and then i realized something. i actually didn't because i got lost and i was late for work <laughs> but <laughs> it was funny <laughs> because we were uh, the, the bus ride was it was so long and and but yeah eventually i survived i got back to work and uh, everything was fine so mm. yeah so it seems like you didn't really talk to english people on a daily basis back mm-hmm. there um so how did you do that that you got this pretty clear british accent like was it more like a self study or did you have any chance later on uh absolutely because first of all i had my teachers were primarily british so uh believe it or not uh my accent uh let's say when i was at high school i would say things like war now i spit on that uh no i'm joking of course but it's it's our internal joke with me me and my colleague because she uses american pronunciation and she says things like ball of war and i say ball of uh uh and uh which is which is a joke. great example all around, right, you know yeah. mm-hmm. so which is mo- which is mock each other all the time uh but my uh my teachers at the language school were mainly british uh so i i got the accent from there and i suppose i i just want it because i am um, i'm a great uh or uh, i read shakespeare and i love shakespeare and i just loved that pronunciation that that beautiful theatrical pronunciation uh so i suppose i wanted to speak like that and mm. also i i like uh when um uh, those bad guys in films they are portrayed usually by cockney Cockney guys, right? Yeah. So uh, I was. You can explain what it is, maybe. Uh, Cockney uh, accent is the briefly. Uh, is, a, yeah. is a typical London accent. Is uh-huh. it, it's it is said that is a is the accent of the of the lower class yeah. of a working class. Sorry, mm-hmm. working class, mm-hmm. usually spoken by uh, you know uh, housebreakers and and thieves. Some kind of poor neighborhoods. Yes, in London. yes. Mm-hmm. 
mostly east, I think. Is it? Uh, I think it's the. Uh, but who knows now? Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, now, it's, now it's, it's widespread. Uh, it's, it has all. The changed. real Cockney is a rhyming slang, actually. Now, now uh-huh. it's just. Uh-huh. I would say some this this would be called like estuary English. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What I, what affected me? I just love that pronunciation, and I want to mm. speak like them. Mm. But of course, when I speak to my students, I, I, you know, this is probably the, the natural accent I have. Mm. It depends on how many beers I have. So <laughs> that's a, changes. That's a, good, that's a good point. <laughs> and obviously, when you were there in London, you were listening to uh, BBC or English, British English stuff. Yeah, you didn't really watch American sitcoms or or movies. Well, on the contrary, because we had a television. Uh, in the kitchen, but uh, I didn't watch it because I didn't spend much time in the kitchen, and the telly was black and white. So, <laughs> uh, and good, the good only for, thing good for Charlie Chaplin movies. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you see no difference. Uh, Silent movie. <laughs> so, and I didn't have a radio, so I didn't really listen to anything in there. Uh, so, uh, so I, I the the only English I. I experience was at work usually, oh, and yeah. you know, of course, I I usually read the newspaper on the underground. And so there was a, as you said, the 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 huge uh, variety of accents mm-hmm. in Indian, Polish. Oh yes, which all differs. Yes. Lot, yeah? mm. <laughs> so yeah, so basically, maybe yeah, subconsciously, mm-hmm. you just kind of like. Soaked it in, yeah. Like perhaps, um, yeah. Mm, mm, when you overheard some conversations, mm-hmm. uh, I always uh, try to imitate, uh, oh yeah, like this... real mm-hmm. native speakers. Yeah. Would you Would you recommend this uh, method for students? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, what to watch a sitcom and yeah, pause it and then you know mm-hmm. try to. Imitate it's 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 a great say, way. It's also mm-hmm. uh, in some book uh, in some books. I think mm-hmm. English file and so on. They they play a record and then the students should repeat it with a with the right uh, voice pitch and mm-hmm. and pronunciation and try to imitate it. But uh, but uh, the the thing is that not many people actually want to do it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that that's the problem. There are some people who are really keen, yeah, to learn and they they want to learn. But some people are like, okay, let's learn the vocabulary and the grammar. And I just don't really care about the accent because the main thing is that people understand me. So yeah. Um. But you know, when I teach, it's I I always I I always correct pronunciation. I mean, my pronunciation is not perfect. Uh. Of course, I'm not a native speaker. Uh. But at least I wanted to sound as native as possible. And this is what I try to teach my students. And this is this works very well with small children because they just imitate. And uh, it was great in Turkey when I was trying to teach them the, the right pronunciation of the voiced and voiceless fricatives and the, the TH sound, yeah, the dental fricative, mm-hmm. uh, the th and the. Uh, so what we did... Because the children, they kept pronouncing words like thank you and thank you. and uh, It's pretty much the same with the uh, yeah. Czech students. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically. M- they mostly say, they fell into uh, thank you. And I say, yeah. don't say thank you unless you are a Cockney Londoner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, you are not there yet. So pronounce it correctly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was really funny because uh, I taught my students these things. And I say, hey, say thank you, mate. Or... You know these things and say, uh, or, or the way I taught them was that I I told them to stick out their tongue and say, okay, uh, you know, stick out your tongue and then grab your tongue and try to say s- snake, and they grab the tongue and uh, uh, they said snake and I say and now say thank you, mm-hmm. and now grab the tongue and say thank you and that's that's precisely the sound we want, yeah so. Basically, they did it, like when you when you work with uh, kids, and uh, it seems like you work kind of a lot. Yeah, it's not like your specialization, but mm-hmm. somehow it just work out like like that. So, um, so yeah, it makes sense that when you work with kids, um, it's better to focus on that mm-hmm. uh, more than when you work with uh, some maybe middle aged students. Yes, where you feel like it's probably better just to focus on to um help them 
mm-hmm. to um, just to to talk. Yeah, yeah uh, and to practice conversation and grammar. They need to get the the input. So you mentioned the um, the uh, the imitating. Um, what what other uh, techniques would you recommend, um, or would you personally use specifically with kids, but you know, like in in general with students? Do you have anything like that you really mm. enjoy doing, and you 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 have a, a, a great uh, outputs? You see the great results. You mean to teach grammar, vocabulary, or pronunciation? I mean, yeah. Let's let's say like all. Oh, like let's mm-hmm. say let's say grammar, pronunciation, conversation. Well, I must say that I am, in terms of grammar, I love teaching grammar. Oh my goodness, I love uh, teaching conditionals. It's like, it's a treat for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. zero and third conditional and so on. I just love it. Uh, and I, I would say I teach in that uh, tradition. When I teach grammar, I, I try to teach in that traditional way. I don't know why. I know that people use different methods and, and they say, okay, listen to this song and can you hear that present perfect in there? You know, that's how you use it and so on. But then some students, usually my students, they come to me and say, you know, the teacher tried to um, explain that to to us and we don't really understand that. And I say, okay. Maybe they lose focus. Maybe. If maybe they're listening this too long maybe, and they uh-huh. don't understand very well Perhaps. or, or the, the topic is boring. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure they lose focus after a few seconds. It's, that... it's very common for older people nowadays. Yes. The focus uh... is so important and so short. <laughs> I, I I agree, <laughs> but I do it I do it the way it worked for me. Uh, the way I was taught grammar by my friend Chris, uh, and uh, he always came. He wrote <clears throat> the points uh, and say, okay, this is when you use it. This is when you use it. This is when you use it. He described the specific situations. He gave one or two or three examples, and you understood and then we tried uh, an exercise and then we talked about it as like okay this sentence describes this why why do you use present perfect not present simple in this sentence well because this is precisely if you look back open your notebook yeah if you've written it down this is precisely this situation yeah because let's say i don't know you talk about experience You don't use present simple for talking about experience. You right. use present perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's this this sentence speaks about experience. Right. That's why you use present perfect. And of course it needs practice. So I do I explain everything. And then we go exercise by exercise. I want to put it in the head. And then we do some sort of a speaking. Mm-hmm. So I prepare some, let's say, questions or uh sentences. In let's say it depends on what, what what we talk about. If it's present perfect, then okay, I, I prepare a speaking exercise for present perfect, and we ask questions. For example, have you ever been to mm. blah blah blah? And the student has has to uh, yeah. answer the question, and that's they how they get it into into the mind. And uh, I suppose I know there are probably better techniques and so on. I know that many teachers would probably disagree with me, but it works for me. I like it this way, and I just uh, and if I see it works for the students, then you know, of course, I like trying different things. But if if this works and we both have fun and it's okay, then why changing it if it works? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if it, for the particular student, there's always uh, p- uh, space for improvement and mm-hmm. Im- improving techniques. Absolutely, I'm open minded to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, different ideas, but. You know, mm. so we've opened to maybe the most common problematic uh, uh, issues: conditionals mm-hmm. and present perfect. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't really focus on past perfect because you know you don't really use it as often as present perfect. That's true in the in a normal normal situation, normal conversation. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, the present perfect. Um, I have experienced it's not that hard to to use. The grammar well, uh-huh. but you really have to um, feel when to use it. When you talk about past, mm-hmm. uh, that's why I always practice it with the uh, topic traveling. Because mm-hmm. that's the easiest to say, okay, this was a trip five years ago. Yes, yes. And it's done. That's good. Uh-huh. It's over. 
Yeah, but if you visited that country again, you can say I've been there twice. Absolutely, yeah, because, because you talk until, until about moment. experience. So traveling works very well um, mm-hmm. so far. And uh, conditionals. Um, do you have any special game or something like that? How to really, as you said, grasp it? Because uh, again, the grammar is not that hard. You just have to yeah. uh, make sure no. you use the if part well. Uh-huh. Uh, but you know how to. That, that, I think that's the mo- that's the the biggest problem that people don't realize when they focus on uh, content when they start talking about yeah. something. They don't realize in that in that uh, in that hurry, uh, you know, if it's uh, if I was or if I am, you know, like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I <coughs> have, you, I... have you noticed any any trick uh, how to really uh, show them how to do it? Uh, I sometimes uh, or I know that some students sometimes struggle with it. For example, I've got a, a former student. Um, and her English is is really beautiful and natural, but I just can't teach her the second conditional to 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 use it correctly. Uh, so, so you you would say that she's even like a B two or oh she's higher she's like a B two C one. Her English is yeah. really natural. I have the same experience. I have a, but, a, a like a totally fluent student, uh-huh. but but the second conditional just, they you, always say if I would yeah absolutely. Absolutely. I, I've even hear. Uh, I've even I've even heard some uh, uh, politicians. Yeah, yeah. really. Uh, it can work in some context if you like want to be super duper polite. Okay. Uh, it's like, it's not that it doesn't exist, but uh, it is very unusual. And uh, yeah, I always tell her, I was like, hey, you just keep using it wrong. And uh, then she texts me, uh, you know, a couple months or sometime later, and then she uses the second conditional incorrectly again. I was like, <laughs> uh, but I, I think it's because they focus on the yeah, well, on, on the message, on they, the content. They really, definitely, they really um, speak about something that yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and and something um, mm-hmm. you know very profound. But what would so I... they neglect? Yeah, uh, this, the grammar. This this, this part. Mm. But uh, as a teacher, you you notice, and um, what 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 I do, what works are games. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's yeah, I I've got some games that are printable games, like um, you know, you've got a counter, you 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 toss the dice, and uh, and there are uh, sentences that are unfinished and you have to make them into conditionals and so on based on real uh, or based on events so for example you know whether you speak about the past or you know whether you speak about uh, hypothetical present or future and so on uh, so they just play uh, it's like Lued or, or uh, they just play this game it's a board game and answer the questions and um uh, and uh, you know get to the end and practice conversation they see uh, a part of the sentence and uh, but but they have to think about the rest so i suppose mm-hmm. there probably might be like it's a good like this kind of drilling yeah yeah, yeah uh, sort of but still it's, it's a sort of a conversation start. it's not like mm-hmm. this is what i usually do after they are sort of familiar Uh, mm-hmm. with the grammar just mm-hmm. just the, mm-hmm. just the mm-hmm. basics to practice it but it's all about practice it's all about speaking and being corrected it's all about practicing because it's like when you play uh the guitar or uh, any mm. musical instrument mm-hmm. if if you just keep playing and you keep making the same mistake and nobody tells you that you are still making the same mistake oh, yeah. you will keep doing it oh sure yeah Or keep making mm. the mistake, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, you need you need to practice, and practice makes perfect. It it works everywhere, mm-hmm. everywhere. You just have to speak. That's all. Yeah, but and have to have somebody who possibly correct. It. Yeah, otherwise you get used to it. And what what I do? Way. I've got I've got a student, uh, a, a a great girl. She she'll be a teacher, and uh, she comes to me, uh, and we try to focus on. Uh, removing these sort of like usually Czech or Chenglish structures oh, yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm, or this mm-hmm. sort of slip of the tongues 
Yeah, and so on. And what I do uh, is that I give her a topic uh, and she speaks. We have a conversation. I record it. And mm-hmm. then on the next lesson, or uh, when we have the next, uh, when we have the next lesson, or before the lesson, I send her, I send her the record, and I, I listen to it. I put my headphones on, and listen to the whole record. Sometimes like twenty minutes, mm-hmm. um, and I try to write down everything that is incorrect. Any grammatical structure that is a bit odd mm-hmm. uh any pronunciation mistakes and then i i write it down i print it out and i say look at these sentences mm-hmm. and tell me what you think is incorrect and then we discuss it yeah and she's like oh in this sentence i probably didn't uh i didn't use s in a third person singular yeah, yeah. And for example yeah that is not what she does for example but you know these things you know um and we try to focus on it and i i suppose if you get if you have such a feedback then and and again you can you can do this um as of uh, if if you do it once a week will it have any effect i suppose it will but still i i keep telling her if you are home alone speak speak alone the, the recording uh in this case herself um it's such a great yeah such a great homework because uh it's very intense mm-hmm. it's it's more intense than just reading or listening yes absolutely yeah, because uh it's kind of it's like your voice speaking to to herself yeah yeah this is great yeah absolutely to record yourself um yeah so uh, that was conditionals present perfect let's just briefly uh talk about the two uh problematic parts uh for some students uh prepositions and uh future yeah because uh, the future it's the same like the present perfect the grammar mm-hmm. is kind of easy to learn mm-hmm. but it's about how you actually feel is it past is it like non finished past uh the same the future is mm-hmm. it well is it like is it something you just realize Yeah, or is it is it uh, gonna? Is it uh-huh. something that you you plan are going to? Do? to it's a you intend it's to a do. plan. Oh, uh, I I always explain the di- Be- because differences. you know we 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 are used to learn uh, well at like uh, you know in all the all the situations, which is not very mm-hmm. correct. No, no, yeah. uh, I don't use will. It's will a, it's it's a, it will, often it, it used to be easier for for teachers mm-hmm. and for us as well. But it's not very, uh, it's not very useful actually. Uh, I d- I well, uh, I don't use useful like all the time because, uh, it is only used for specific situations. For example, mm. uh, if you say I'll go out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what situ? What is the situation? Mm. Have you decided now? Mm-hmm. For example, mm. I'll go out tonight. Uh, why do I say will? I ask my students why. And they say, well, it can be a sudden decision. Say, mm-hmm. oh, all right, I've just decided. All right, all right, I'll go out. Yeah, I will yeah. go out. But if you say, I'm going to go out uh, to, to tonight. Well, it's my plan. I, I'm still not 100% sure, but it's a it's a plan. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I might go to the cinema or I'm going to go to the cinema, but I might end up in a pub. You oh, know, yeah. uh, huh. with my friends, and so then it's, the it's a plan. Day, the next day, you can actually say, "I was gonna." Do yeah, I was it, going to but go. The, the plan but changed absolutely, <laughs> and then you've got present continuous that is used mm. for for future as oh, yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say, "I'm going. Uh, I'm going out tonight for sure." And it's hundred yeah, yeah, percent. I've yeah. got the ticket mm-hmm, to the theater mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. the cinema, and we are going. Right. And right. Th- I always write these three tenses, and I say, "Okay, tell me when." When do you use it and compare it? And it's What's really different? up to you, like how you feel it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I always Absolutely. tell them, uh, none of them is wrong. Absolutely. It's all about how you feel that. Yes, true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, enough grammar. Uh, let's get back to the Istanbul experience. Did you, <laughs> <laughs> did you go, because that's very unusual. That's very like, uh, you know, interesting <laughs> to talk about. Uh, If you did, say so. Did you, did you 
move directly from London to Istanbul or uh, were you sometimes back no. here in Brno? Uh, and and actually like um um when uh, that decision came to your mind to leave London uh, did you feel like it's not worth it anymore? Uh, no, actually I took my third university exam, my mm-hmm. entrance exam which I uh failed. <laughs> Again, oh, okay, <laughs> and it's like okay, um, what now? Uh, so I decided to go to Istanbul, but uh, previously, uh, oh, I'd been there for a month. Sorry, not in Istanbul. I was in Mersin, which is uh on the other side, very eastern Turkey, mm-hmm. and um, uh, it's the south su- southeast of uh Turkey, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I had a girl in there. Uh, we met online actually, and I was like, okay, uh, she would be worth visiting. So I did it, and we really hit it off. And uh, that's a great phrase, <laughs> hit it off. By the way, can you just explain what it is? Just briefly. I knew you would ask. Uh, uh-huh. Hit it off. It means that we became mm-hmm. f- friends. Uh, if if you meet a friend and you uh, hit it off, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, it means that you 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 get on well from the very beginning. Right. You feel the energy, like there is yes, something. there's um, a connection, mutual. Yeah. And we, so we, did you feel that when you first met? Not, yes, uh, not online, of course. Yeah, yeah when, uh, when we met. first met, we. Bio, it was kind of risky. It, it, it yeah, was that you you moved there only because you had a maybe a crush. Mm-hmm. On, <laughs> I did. Crush but... is like when you like somebody physically, and right? we actually fell in love when I when oh, I yeah, went yeah, yeah. to Mer- uh, to Mersin, and uh, oh, okay. so I went back to uh, the Czech Republic. Mm-hmm. I was, I think, I spent the whole summer or the the rest of the summer uh, in here, uh, and I moved to Istanbul because she moved to Istanbul with her uh, family. And I moved there uh, in December, I think 15 of December. I arrived at Istanbul and uh, basically started living there. I spent three months basically searching for a job. And after three months, I started to work. I found a job in that uh, kindergarten and later on in uh, in the uh, language school, which I later, uh, well, I... I I stopped working there. Let's let's end it there. And uh, my main job was uh, at that kindergarten, and mm. it was a brilliant job. I liked that very much. Got great memories about the job, and I I felt like I I I still feel like I had achieved something in there. Mm. So it was actually the very first teaching experience, mm-hmm. right? Mm. If you don't count those uh, tutoring lessons when you just meet your friend and try to explain English. And I had teaching experience when I was still studying at the language school. I was teaching, uh, Jesus, it was like a center of free time. Mm-hmm. I was uh, kind of well, like volunteer. Yeah, right? yeah, basically <laughs> yeah. because the salary was like uh-huh. miserable. I, and I, th- this is not why I, why I was doing it. It was... I had two lessons a week, so mm-hmm. uh, always on Friday. So, so it seems like the professional part was excellent mm-hmm. in Istanbul. The relationship worked well uh, to some moment. Maybe. Yes. And uh, so uh, how, how long was it in total? Um, uh, two, years, two years, three months. Uh-huh. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So what, what went wrong? Did well, you, why you didn't stay? <clears throat> my visa was expiring, and um, and I didn't really feel like um, I, I I wanted to stay there any longer. It, it it was the time. It was I think 2016, and even before, uh, Turkey was becoming dangerous. There were some bomb attacks, uh, even near the school where I was working, uh, and uh, this was also the reason but i couldn't see any future in there even in the relationship it was everything was just uh, an obstacle oh yeah so yeah. i was like and i wanted to uh i wanted to study as well i wanted to finish my mm. i want to have a university degree uh which i now have and i found my way i achieved things in here and you know turkey is just <laughs> 
it's a as a chapter that is closed now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you kind of like felt that you would get stuck there. Yeah, absolutely. I would. Uh, I did get stuck. And, and w how how was the social life? Uh, did you spend all the spare time just with her, or did you have any? And there was a there was another there, thing. You know? I didn't. I had zero friends in there. Mm. So uh, I felt I felt really alone, and my my life really depended on on her whether she would or wouldn't come and if she wouldn't i would spend you know all the all day alone cooking mm -hmm, watching mm -hmm, mm -hmm. series and and, oh, yeah. and so on mm -hmm. because i couldn't really go anywhere i didn't know anyone and then nobody s well very very few people speak at least some basic english so mm -hmm. it's it's hard to have friends and when i had some friends uh, my girlfriend was extremely jealous and my friends usually when when where i worked most of my colleagues were actually uh female mm -hmm. colleagues so um i and she, you know I, i struggled with this because she was extremely jealous and i was like oh yeah i've got this colleague we talked and <laughs> Mm. Uh, were there any uh, other uh, foreigners or were you actually the only one in the whole neighborhood uh, at school in the whole neighborhood i was probably the only oh, foreigner yeah. uh but there was uh one when i started teaching at that kindergarten there was uh, a girl from nigeria i think mm -hmm. uh she was teaching english there but uh apparently they just didn't like uh the way she was teaching or something uh they didn't like her pronunciation uh because they couldn't understand her so uh it was the reason why she was fired actually and they hired uh my australian colleague mm -hmm. uh oslem she was uh born in australia to turkish parents a great girl we we, we again we hit it off mm -hmm. and uh you know immediately and we came gr we became the best of friends really Uh, Tell us a little bit about the uh, Aussie Australian accent. Uh, what what is the uh, <laughs> the? It, it's a bit similar to English, British yeah, uh -huh. English, uh, but there are some specific things. The same like a Kiwis New Zealand accent. Yeah, Kiwis. Yeah, I know. But I must say that her accent was. It was. It was. It was like a a. a weird british accent but it, mm -hmm. it was it was no, quite no, pure it, not, was, it wasn't not australian <laughs> yeah not it, a typical australian uh-huh mm -hmm. so it wasn't really like uh it, it was like typical british accent not not or okay unusual typical unusual mm -hmm. an unusual british accent uh but very easy to understand okay. her english was uh it was uh well good to understand mm -hmm. so So, conclusion is that um, it was a good experience mm -hmm. to some extent, but later on you just realized uh, the huge uh, cultural um, obstacles, yeah. uh, differences, uh -huh. issues. So, that made you to realize... It would be probably better to come back here and yeah. It made me realize get the that degree. Right, that was just mm -hmm. no no way. So mm -hmm. so right here right now we are sitting here. Uh, you teach uh, English, right? Mm -hmm. Um, are you happy with that? Is it is it satisfying for I you? I am. I am. Uh, I love doing my job. Uh, but the situation that is here now. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's difficult for me. It's difficult for the students. I have, I think I have too many lessons. I I teach about thirty eight, sometimes uh, forty lessons a week. Is like forty five minutes or yeah, forty forty yeah. to forty five mm -hmm. minutes. Some, if I if I count forty five minute lessons, so that's about thirty eight um to forty. And if if I cover uh, lessons for someone, uh, but it, it's just too much, and I feel really tired. And I I've started feeling this sort of uh, the 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 very beginning of the burnout syndrome. Mm -hmm. So I need to focus on 
how to avoid this and have a have a proper break. Uh, so I can't wait. Uh, to, uh, you know, um, and so after, we have the after, holiday. And after the break uh, that you are gonna take, mm-hmm. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> yeah. Uh, w- w- what are the plans? What are you planning for in well, near future? Let's I'm, say next next year, next I was, school year. I was accepted finally at university. Uh, so I'm I'm going to finish my master degree um, at uh the university of palatsky uh and uh, i I'm, i have applied for jobs at uh, high schools and uh primary schools mm. in prostyov and olomouc mm. so uh fingers crossed mm-hmm. i'll try to sure. find a job at a state school uh have fewer lesson more bureaucracy of course and uh, i want to do i want to keep teaching at mm-hmm. big ben and yep. lingua but f- like you know twice a week maybe mm-hmm. uh because i love it there i uh, this, this school is brilliant and i love the job in there so i just don't want to give it up mm-hmm. uh the people there but you know so I, my colleague is leaving which is a great pity a brilliant teacher she teaches at the pedagogical faculty mm-hmm. great teacher marvelous great colleague um and do you do your own tutoring uh, regardless language school uh-huh like uh, do you have any website or something or facebook page i've got i've got a facebook where people page. can reach you you know if they want like yeah, you yeah. know the real individual class mm-hmm. you know they without can, without language school they they can con- without a middleman yeah yeah they can contact me via my uh facebook page uh which i actually have to change the name because uh it's english you know olomouc and we we moved to prostyov so a, point, uh, a couple right. of months ago <laughs> so uh so they can contact me via my facebook page uh but you know in these days i have to refuse students because I, it's just too much maybe more like a uh, next school year Ab- absolutely if uh, i have any after free some time rest. you know <laughs> it's everybody comes to me and says you know i would like to have lessons as like i would love to but it's not in my mental capacity mm. yeah, sure. to, to 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 you know give more really and, and this know. is not a this is not a profession you can just uh, take so many classes yeah, it's, because it's because not... you have to focus on each class Yes. Each class n- needs the, a different approach. That's the different p- topics. Uh, d- you know, it's kind of like um, psychology. You know, yeah. you also have to deal with the uh, with the uh, um, with the character traits mm-hmm. of the students, with the uh, with their uh, job. Uh, you know, their their hobbies, their their nature. Yeah. So it's their not personality. It's, of course. Yeah. It's it's not like. Uh, doing it in this kind of uh, robotic and that, that's way, the, that's the right? point uh, especially in this situation it made me realize so many times that sometimes i'm so tired that i become a teaching robot and oh, i don't yeah, and i don't want horrible. that i don't mm, want that i want to horrible. i try to avoid this as as much as, as i can so fewer classes but proper classes mm-hmm. yeah so that's full, why i want full to, attention full right? attention because sometimes this you can you can see it in the students faces uh they are uh they are demotivated and uh i i keep trying and know. they are often burnt out from their yes, jobs absolutely. And they, so what they expect they pass, from you is they pass it on you they pass it and what they expect from you is to not only teach them something uh-huh. but cheer them up yeah absolutely to have but, a nice time with but you but this i i can i don't have uh so much energy you know or mm. you know so uh and sometimes i actually want to spice things up and uh have a better lesson so these days what we do with our uh post graduation classes or pomaturitni mm-hmm. studium uh, to avoid those boring um, cambridge oxford listenings i always tell them uh to give me a topic and i try to find a video on youtube sure. uh where i don't know a, somebody a guy a girl speaks about the topic uh for example uh we talked about uh traveling so i found a great video where a girl is traveling uh all around alaska 
you know, and there's a beautiful video, and then you you see the the beautiful landscape, and and I don't know, she she's traveling on the ship, and I prepare, I, I watch it. It's usually the length is about ten to twelve minutes, so that's good enough. And yeah, yeah that that's yeah. just that's mm. just proper. And I try to prepare about ten questions. I say, here are the questions. Watch the video. And try to answer the questions. Oh, yeah. that, that motivates you know, them and I to, say, to how... really focus. Right? Absolutely. Mm. So I say, what does the girl say about... And, you know, there's a specific situation. And I always... Uh, if there is unusual... If there's any unusual vocabulary. So I write it down. We discuss the vocabulary before we play the uh, video. So that they can actually focus on it. And already know what it means. And then they hear it in that listening. And then we answer the questions. Yeah. So and I said, did you like the video? You know, it's not always about getting as much as information as you can and like total focus. But sometimes there are pauses, just beautiful landscape. Mm-hmm. You know, and I suppose this is this is something that you can't do with just listening, because you just hear it. Yeah. And if you have a video, you 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 see, or you use vision yeah so you not only hear it but you see it and oh now she's talking about this and there is actually the animal so you you know you use more senses i think it's it's fine she can connect the scene with the specific words mm-hmm. or yeah 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 the specific grammar for example she can use the conditional and they can they can connect the sentence mm-hmm. they see the specific with situation a, with a vision. right this i hope great, it helps yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. Mm. So we've discussed um, your London, mm-hmm. Istanbul experiences, your um, own path, your own studying, your current uh, teaching. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, something like um, something encouraging. Maybe. <laughs> encouraging, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I would definitely tell the students to to first of all to to find a relationship with the language, to not to fight it. Because so many people just fight it. Don't fight it. Accept it and learn to love it. That's the key because otherwise you will never reach the level w- you 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 won't because you will just keep fighting it and you have to accept it and uh start loving it find a way through what you like doing for example uh watch videos that have content content which interests you yeah so for example you like traveling watch videos about traveling in english I I'm a, I'm a great uh fan of history and medieval everything that is medieval uh blacks blacksmithing making weapons and so on so my content yep. is on on YouTube and there's so many videos uh so this is the content what I watch and I I always learn new words from from you know from the videos and oh I didn't know that word you know mm-hmm. so I I write it down or try to remember it and so on so learn through what you like do what 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 interests you yeah what you like and try to find that sort of a that path that has not too many obstacles so because you have to cross an obstacle then you have to cross another one no just try to find yeah. the way around mm. the way you like it you know and if if this doesn't suit you well try to find a different way mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just try to love it and that's that's the moment when our job uh, gets closer to not only tutoring but kind of like a coaching yeah when you have to uh, adapt kind of adapt to uh, their needs mm-hmm. and uh, feel that okay this person maybe is not really into traveling but more into some kind of technical issues uh-huh. and vice versa right so yeah. it's it's our our and job yeah to to help them you learn love, all the love time they are love their topic and that's the best about it you always um learn new mm-hmm. stuff for yourself that's great yeah yeah mm-hmm. i've had uh so many students they had 
uh, uh, different jobs. I taught technicians and, uh, you know, I, because I also taught company, uh, company less or courses. And uh, some of the people, they just worked in mechanical engineering, engineering and so on. And we talked about CNCs and milling machines and, and uh, lathes and, and, you know, the, these sort of like uh, engines and machines and so on. Uh, and it was interesting because I'm interested in it. And sometimes you learn a voc you know, word or some vocabulary that you didn't know because you don't work there. But they do, and they they uh, they take some words from English and use it in Czech because there's a, it becomes a term, and I say, ah, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, you know, so mm. you see, that that's great because. And you then learn... you know, in in five minutes, uh, you are talking about literature uh, yeah. or or uh, some <laughs> kind of art, you yes, know, entirely uh, different topic. Absolutely. So yeah, we need to be like a chameleons, you know. You need to be mobile, mobile in terms yeah. of yeah, speaking yeah, yeah. topics. Mm -hmm, exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I think yeah, we've we've uh, pointed out everything like really urgent, uh, important stuff. Um, so definitely good luck um, with your future teaching career, and uh, if you really decide um during um you know um the state state school mm -hmm. um yeah that would be great for for the kids I hope for so. the students yeah to do, to, because you do the interactive audiovisual mm -hmm. um classes which is you know definitely better than the old fashioned boring absolutely only textbook stuff so good luck with this and uh yeah, let's hope the the people will uh, benefit from this conversation I at hope. least a little bit. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> I thank you. Thank yeah. you for the conversation. Very welcome. <laughs>